Okay, I guess we're gonna talk about Las Vegas. This is a world This is a world premiere. This is a world Hey y'all, welcome to another Food for Thought and today we're gonna talk about uh, what happened in Las Vegas on Sunday night, there was a mass shooting where apparently a gunman got on from the 36th floor of a hotel, took aim on a country music festival and killed 59 individuals and injured over 500 others, 527 others, I think the number was, um, but a, a, a huge number of people were, were affected by this. And obviously that doesn't even get into the, oh man, this is a, this is going to be a hard one. I don't even want to go into this. I can't think of anything to say about this. And what does that mean? <laughs> what does it mean that I can't think of anything to say? I mean, I run off at the mouth and people run off at the mouth about every single thing, but something like this, happens and just to me it just is so meaningless it's just so meaningless and it's numbing and does it mean like is it is it something like do i should i go to a therapist and get myself checked out i don't know but i can't be the only person who's being affected by this by this in this way and i just can't be i can't just i can't pretend to put on a, f a sad face or a concerned face it just I'm not phased by this. I'm not phased by this. And that troubles me. That's very, very troubling to me. And, you know, my first response obviously was that, you know, this was not going to be, you know, and it, and it hasn't been, that the, the, there's a question about whether or not to look at this as an, an act of terrorism. And that's meaningful. And that's very meaningful, but what does it mean? It just seems to me that we live in a society where messages and ideology has been so twisted that bad is good and good is bad. So that an act of, of defiance that is a peaceful act of a peaceful act of defiance is met with such outrage and hostility that a truly heinous act i can't i don't know how to react to that and i'm there's there's no way that people are going to react to me that seems to fit the situation because I'm so used to people pretending to be outraged over the use of the word nigger. Over, you know, someone bending their knee over, you know, fully raw Christina in blackface. I'm so used to people foaming at the mouth over nothing, over nothing that when something happens that requires a truly authentic response, I don't know how to respond. <laughs> I just don't know how to respond. And so I am going to call out a, a, a few people that have responded to this, and I'm going to include links in the description box below. First of all, Sensei Aishtamas. I really appreciate it what Seren had to say about about it. I mean, certainly, obviously, she talked a lot about white supremacy. She, t she talked a lot about the way that this demonstrates the double standards that we have in our society when we're talking about violence, when it is perpetrated by brown people, and violence when it is perpetrated by white people, or people who identify as white. And it was it was actually kind of moving and 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 Seren was clearly upset by this and said some things that I don't agree with 100% but she did tie the actions of that individual on the 36th floor of that hotel to a history a tradition of violence in the United States by western cultures who have basically plowed over the world and made life meaningless, turned people into things. So that by the time someone gets on the 36th floor and starts firing into a crowd, 
it's not a wonder to me that that person can separate those things moving around in that concert from the lives that ultimately were lost and the loved ones who will, you know, suffer now because these people that they cared for so dearly have been lost in such a tragic way. We have a tradition in this country of turning people into things for our entertainment, for our survival. Uh, and so those things be start to become meaningless. Those things start to become absolutely meaningless. And so it's not a wonder that someone could do this. And Saran, again, I'll, I'll include the, li the link below, but clearly looks at the situation from the perspective of, you know, a, uh, you know, a civil rights activist who is, you know, going to point out the contradictions, the way that this person is being responded to in the media, in just the, in the general public, in so, you know, social media and the things that are being said about this individual and the way that, that language is very different than the way we hear about the violence of people who are brown. Um, the way people have tended to um, avoid politicizing what happened as well. Um, that the idea that someone could just randomly prepare in the way this individual had to prepare to get those weapons into that hotel room, to wait, to, to know that there was going to be a, right? There, that wasn't, a, it wasn't an accident, right? That that person happened to be there, right? That that person, that those weapons happened to be there, right? So regardless of what we know, there was a political statement that was being made. We just don't know what the political statement was, right? Anything that is going to, to anything on that, anything done on that scale is done with a political ends in mind. And either that person might have been trying to make a statement about gun control, that might, person might have been trying to make a, a statement about white power, that person may have been just trying to make a statement about religion, about morality, whatever it was, that person was making some statement, right? That person was making a statement, we just don't know what it was. And so the question of this as a terrorist act, it should be, this should be, this should not be questioned. It's a, it's a terrorist act, right? It fits perfectly within the, the definitions of what is a terrorist act. And so to, to point to my next, um, the next comment, uh, the next commentator that I'm going to talk about is Philip DeFranco, who I've had some issues with recently for failing to frame certain things as acts of terrorism while pointing to other things as act of acts of terror uh, acts of terrorism and philip defranco says very states very clearly in his video where he talks about this and i thought he did so very respectfully and, and i want to commend philip defranco who i've again been kind of hard on in the past um and maybe deservedly so philip defranco talks about this and he he actually gives the definition of a terrorist of terrorism and you you can see very clearly that this is an act of terrorism um, just based on the definition. Um, so, understanding what this is, but still the fact that it is an act of terrorism doesn't really answer the question of why it happens. And so the last person that I want to talk about is Stephen Molyneux, who takes a slightly different approach in his video and really seems to want to spend a fair amount of his video, I want to say making excuses for for what happened. He really tries to get into the psychology of the of the the perpetrator of this act, which I can appreciate. I really can appreciate. Um, however, I thought uh, it was done in a way that was slightly insincere because a lot of things that he says that he's not going to do in the video, then he turns around and does. But, um, you know, he says he's not apologizing for the person, but he, in, in many ways he is apologizing for the person. But what he seems to be trying to say is it's the fault of the parents. He tries to blame the parents. He tries to say that it's the result of leaving the child in childcare, right? So it ends up being, you know, a very 
like a very conservative take on it, you know, if he had been, if it, you know, he's basically be, make, turns it into kind of an anti-feminist um, uh, position, right? He's saying he's not going to politicize it, but he very, he very much politicizes it, um, which I thought was a little bit, um, which I thought was a little disgusting. I thought was a little disgusting, but I don't want to say that it's wrong necessarily, right? I'm not going to say that there's not a role that the parents of this individual, the, the, the you know, the way that this person individual was raised, but I don't want to, let's not limit it to the parents. <laughs> let's not limit it to this individual's parents. Let's look at the society within this, uh, w within which this person was raised. When you look at the society within which this person was raised, then it really does start to make sense. I don't think limiting it to the fact that his mother worked and that he may have been left in childcare is really, um, a fair assessment of the situation. Now, looking at the fact that this individual's, you know, father may have been a bank robber and may have been a fugitive from justice, those things perhaps made sense. The fact that the person was on the FBI most wanted list is meaningless because there are individuals who were on the FBI most wanted list. Angela Davis was on the FBI most wanted list, right? And are we going to say that Angela, if, and, you know, the children of Angela Davis were, you know, are, are, would be violent because, you know, it's, those things make no sense. No, we can talk about the specific behaviors, the specific environment, the specific context that this individual is raised in, but let's not look at whether or not the FBI put them on their wanted list, right? Because that's meaningless. And I think that that's the problem, is that when we start looking at things through these ideological lenses, we're always going to fail. We're always going to fail. Because we understand that there is already a gap between what is being experienced, what we are experiencing, and the way that these things are media mediated by, by ideology. The fact that ideologies tend to reduce life into these, you know, consumable morsels. And in many ways, it makes those things meaningless. It, it takes away the true meaning of these things because we've tried to distill it down. We've tried to make it simple. We've tried to make it so that the, you know, that, you know, any fool could understand it. But the fact is that a fool should not be able to understand it. It should take a really, it should take a thoughtful, intelligent human being. And that's what we should be trying to like, we should be trying to uh, nurture in our society is thoughtfulness and critical thinking so that we can wrestle with these very, very complex issues that are surrounding us. Again, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this. I don't know what to say about this. I know that the answer is not trying to politicize what happened. I know that the answer isn't that white men are violent. <laughs> I know that that's not the answer. Although we may nurture that aspect of men, you know, we may, there may be a sense of entitlement that exists within a particular culture. And I'm going to talk about that in other videos. But again, I just don't feel like today is the day to talk about that. Um, I just want to open up our thinking. One thing I think we can't do is look at this individual as evil. I think that's probably the greatest mistake that we can make. And I feel like several individuals and Philip DeFranco may have done that. Certainly Stephen Molyneux uh, did that in their video um, to talk about this individual as evil, I think is the most harmful thing that we can do. Because to look at this individual as evil removes the possibility that this, that the person standing next to you right now, the next person you encounter is capable of this exact same act. I think we live in a society that grooms us all to be murderers. We live in a society that grooms us to be bloodthirsty. 
again, you know, the way we, the way we, the the way that I can call myself entitled to to be in this space, the very space that I am in right now, is only achieved and maintained through acts of violence on my behalf. You know, I, you know, this t-shirt I had it made you know I you know I had it made it was made in the you know it's supposed to be sweatshop free right but I don't know where the I don't know where the the cotton came from I don't know where the cotton came from where it was grown I don't know what pesticides were used I don't know who you know I don't know who picked it I don't know what they suffered right it's for my convenience not to think about those things And as long as we live in a society that is so fueled by violence, I think we have to avoid trying to target individual acts and say that that's the bad thing. It's woven through everything. It's woven through everything. And how do we get it out of there? That's the cancer. That's the cancer. Again, I don't know what to say about this. So I'm gonna shut up now. That's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace.